Can you hear me? Morning, everyone. Good morning. We've actually started a minute earlier so um, than, than we should. And uh, just for once, hopefully, we've got all our um, technical issues under control. I, if you um, came along last week, I do apologise again. I, we, David and I have absolutely no idea what happened. Um, as I said last week, where there was the whole platform, the whole GTW platform was completely screwed. So uh, there we are. I c I'm looking over at David's screen and I can see that you can see my screen because I can see his screen. So we are a little, we're going to be a little bit rusty because we haven't de done these for some time for all sorts of reasons. But if you've signed up, you know we've got, um, we've done them now as a whole series, partly because of uh, the new GDPR uh, um, regulations it's just easier and also we have done when you opt in you opt into GTW so all you're opting into are the webinars and if you ever want to opt out when you get a um, an email from GTW please just uh, there's an unsubscribe button at, at, at the end we don't run any mailing lists anymore the only um sort of for marketing purposes the only lists we run are as i said this one for gtw when the series comes to an end we will then um, start again and then you can either re-opt in if you still want to come along and uh, and obviously if you are customers of ours if your clients of ours either for the um for the software or for the qte program i mean clearly we have to keep your uh, details on file uh, because you are a customer it really is um it's a bit of a pain in in some ways but in other ways at least it stops um you know people getting lots of spam so they say right uh the format the format is um very straightforward uh we are going to be looking at uh volume price analysis the and the quantum indicators i know i can see in the room we have a lot of new people we have people from um all over the all over the globe i recognize some names people who have emailed me who have read the books you are more than welcome very welcome to join us today um i can also see we have some of our quantum users again you're more than welcome uh, to uh, come along and with regard to questions we're going to actually do something different with these sessions because we want to keep them a bit tighter and um not sort of run too long uh, we will be um you know, looking at questions as they come up, but possibly David uh, do them later on in the session. So because there's, a, you know, there is quite a lot to get through. I'll explain how we're going to get through the content in a second. Um, it's just going to make it easier, but we don't really want to uh, interrupt this, uh, you know, the flow of the price action. Sometimes, you know, if the market is a, is is a bit. Uh, um, um, slow and there's nothing going on then we you know we might revisit that uh, um, sorry we won't we might revisit that decision but for the time being that's what we'd like to do on this occasion I'm just going to pass you back to Dave and pass you to David and then uh, we'll start Thanks, darling, and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. I was going to say good morning, but uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, just a couple of minor other uh, points that uh, we always mention. Um, in these sessions, obviously, we're focusing pretty much on Forex. In the second session later on today, uh, it'll be much broader, uh, where we'll be focusing more on stocks, indices and commodities, and less so on Forex. In terms of the platforms, I know uh, many of you know us very well, but in terms of the platforms, in this session, we tend to concentrate uh, on MT4 and MT5, probably more so on MT5 now. We've um, transferred all the indicators across to that platform. If you're using MT4 or you're familiar with MT4 and you haven't migrated to MT5, there's a lot of rumor and speculation, which is always flying about, about meta quotes and whether they're going to ditch MT4 in the, in the longer term and move everyone, all the customer base over to MT5. Whether that's true or not, who knows? It may or may not happen. Um, but in terms of MT5, if you're using MT4 and you're familiar with MT4, MT5 is, is a really easy transition. It, it opens up the market for a variety of other instruments. So you'll find on MT5, and it's part of the reason that we did it as well, is that you'll find you'll be able to access indices very easily, you'll be able to access commodities, you can access stocks, and of course you've got Forex. And in addition to that, the platform itself is very intuitive. It's got exactly the same sort of look and feel as MT4. 
The biggest difference you'll find is you have a much, much broader array of timeframes to choose from. So if you're familiar with MT4 and you've not looked at MT5, please have a look at it there. Increasingly, you will find the brokers offering MT5. 18 months ago, it was very sparse. Now you'll find it much more freely available. And one of the best places to go and check out all the brokers, we don't recommend brokers, but one of the sites we always recommend is 100forexbrokers.com. And that's 100 as the numeral. So it's 100forexbrokers.com. If you hop over there, you'll find every single MT4 stroke MT5 broker. You'll find all their classifications. You'll find what customers they take and what customers they don't take. You'll find what um, um, accounts they offer, whether they offer micros, minis, whatever it is, it's all there. And you can filter on whatever um, filter regime you wish. And it's just a great site. We have no relationship to the site. It's just we always reference it because it is a great place to go and search out your broker, whether it's a live account or a demo account. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point to say, if we can hold the questions, we will try and get round to them. If they're short ones, we'll try and answer them in the chat. If they're longer ones, then we'll try and answer them on air for you. So I hope that's okay. I'm going to pass back to Anna. We do flip-flop between the platforms, but as I say, primarily we'll be on MT5. I've got the Ninja Trader running on my side, um, just sort of keeping a heads up, see what's, uh, keep an eye on what's going on. Right, just before we start, and we've got 10 minutes to the London Open, can I just um, draw your attention to the disclaimer that's on your screen? It's been on your screen since uh, since we started, and I'm sure you're all aware of it, uh, of the risks that are involved in uh, trading this market. And uh, so please, please don't ever uh, use money that you cannot afford to lose. And in some markets and under certain, certain conditions, you can lose more money than you started. Although, I have to say, check out the new ESMA regulations. There's been lots of talk in the in the press about how um, certainly with the reduction in leverage, um, it's um, it's going to, um, uh, you know, affect basically the, uh, uh, you know, how quickly you can possibly lose money. Everyone says, you know, leverage is a good thing, but it's also a very bad thing because it's the speed at which you can either make or lose money. We're not going to do uh, talk about ESMA today. We may do a, um, a webinar later on on about it and certainly because uh, you know it's, it's uh, it, uh, the leverage that is being offered certainly here in Europe and in London um, it's going to have an impact on um, the amount of um, you know as I said how quickly uh, you can uh, uh, make money but also it stops you losing money fast as well and uh, a part, and one of the um, elements of the regulations is to do with margin. It's there's more protection for traders. We're going to look at it a little bit more uh, closely. As I said, perhaps we'll do a webinar about it. But if you have a broker, a UK broker or a European broker, I'm sure they've been in touch with you to explain this in more detail. Right, so that's the um, that's the disclaimer out of the way. As I said earlier on, uh, thank you so much for coming along. For those of you who don't know us, this is um, this is where we are. This is where actually where we're bro broadcasting from. We're actually down in Hampshire in the New Forest, a very hot and very scorched New Forest. The uh, the ponies and the animals are uh, looking very desultory and trying to find a little bit of shade uh, all the time. It's the most beautiful part, uh, one of the most beautiful parts of the UK, and we're very blessed and very privileged. To to be able to live here. The only thing we've got at suffering at the moment, certainly not the heat, is um, we've got some mozzies because uh, we're very close to the water, but that's a very small price to pay for where we are. Right, just returning, I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, has it gone? Has it gone? Hold on. Right. Okay. These sessions, very, very quickly, um, we're going to be look at, looking at charts, obviously in different time frames. And but we're going to look at the chart and their structure pretty much in terms of what we call the Wyckoff principle of the price cycle. And for those of you who are on the program, on the QTE program, you will be familiar with this particular uh, slide. It's one of the slides from the technical analysis uh, module. There is a, what we call the price cycle. This cycle. Um, happens in all time frames and the best way to describe it is like a Russian doll you know the Russian dolls that you have a big doll and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller they're all identical except 
in terms of size and they all sit inside each other. So we're going to be looking at a chart and the structure of the chart in terms of its price cycle, where we are in that price cycle, what is the price cycle uh, uh, that we're looking at, as I said, from the uh, from the slower timeframes down to the faster timeframes. Are they, um, you know, are they, um, you'll often find that the slower time frames may be telling you uh, uh, one thing, but a faster time frame will be telling you another. And often one of the um, things that uh, traders find really complicated is really, uh, you know, they by flip-flopping around time frames and not deciding in advance what they're going to trade and what they're going to, if you like, compare what is happening in their preferred time frame with perhaps a slower one, is they get confused because maybe on a monthly chart, on a weekly chart, on a daily chart, you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, the price cycle, it could be perhaps in an uptrend or it could be in congestion, but down, if you like, at the cold phrase where there's, uh, you know, on the five minute chart is where they're going to take a trade, it is completely contra. It, you know, it could be giving you an entirely different picture. Does that mean you can't take a trade? No, absolutely not at all. But what it, but you have to be aware of what you're looking at and pretty much stick to whatever time frames you want to trade. So if it's the five minutes and you want to look at the hour and perhaps you look at the at the daily or with MT5, the eight hour chart, and I'll explain why. Uh, when I bring my charts over, that's one of the uh, decisions you have to take, and that's what we will be doing here. We're not going to go to this in a great, in a uh, uh, in a, a lot of detail. A lot of what we say, everything that we say here, is uh, first of all introduced through the books, and then you'll find more information in these webinars. And of course, ultimately, if you then decide you want to take the full program uh, with us, everything kind of builds on uh, one thing on top of the other. And people ask me, they email me, and they say, well, can I trade if I just you know, spend $4.99 on one of your books or maybe $10 on, on two of them? I said, for sure. Yeah, if you want to spend time reading through the books, doing all the work yourself, yeah, we have plenty of emails to say that uh, people are just happy to take the books, uh, you know, get themselves a demo uh, account and away they go. Do you need the indicators as well? That is very much up to you. The indicators are there to help. All indicators are there to help you make a trading decision. We developed them for a very particular reason to support our approach and methodology, which is uh, volume price analysis. They just make your life easier. But again, does that mean you have to have the quantum indicators with volume price analysis with the um, with this methodology, our own particular ones? No, because we have lots of emails for people who use Fibonacci, who, view, who use Elliott Wave, who use moving averages, who use MACD, who use a whole uh, range of indicators out there. And uh, what it does more than anything, it it VPA validates what is going on on the screen. That's what you always want to know. What you want to know is what am I seeing on the screen? Is it actually genuine? And that's what VPA does. And what the uh, what an indicator does, certainly with something like Elliott Wave, uh, the email I had from someone, he said, it's actually made me a better Elliott Wave trader because it has helped me to uh, to uh, to uh, to distinguish when is when is the first wave, when is, is the second wave, where is the third wave. I'm not an expert on Elliott Wave, but I could understand exactly what he was saying. Then we're going to have a look at the charts in terms of what we call their C states. This is something that David and I have come up um, uh, with this uh, with this description. I'm not going to, there's no slide for this at the moment. And the best place you can find this is actually in this book. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to go to this. And that's this book here, the binary options book. Now, the binary options book, you think, well, you know, why binary options? Um, and binary options, by the way, I believe have been banned under ESMA, certainly for Europe. But, you know, don't quote me on that. But that is what I've uh, that is what I've heard. But this book is not a book to encourage you to go and uh, trade binary options in terms of the off exchange binary options, you know, the ones that are purely GAN, which are really a, a fixed odds bet. But what is in there, it's the, 
is to help you understand what is a true binary option and an option that you get on an exchange such as Nadex. But what we came up with in this book was something that we call the C states of the market. And as we go through the, uh, uh, the webinars, we'll refer to the C states of the market and they will, will refer to things such as, we will say, is this a trend? Is this a trend with momentum? Is this a trend with volatility? Is it a trend with momentum and volatility? Is it congestion without volatility? Is it congestion with volatility? As I said, we will be referring to these, uh, 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 we'll be using these expressions and terms, but if you want to know more about them, then that is where you will find them in this book and go back to there and basically with with volume price analysis and the charts that we'll be looking at is what is what is the VPA narrative what is volume price analysis telling us you know what is going on in this chart because we need to know what are the indicators telling us are they telling us there's a potential setup coming up uh, is there uh, or is there nothing going on because it's a great way to make sense of what's going on and establish and establish first of all what is going on and what is likely to be going on and to try and anticipate what is going on because that's what VPA does. But much more important than that, it, it helps to establish is it compatible? Is it compatible with your preferred trading setup? Because this is another thing you have to decide as, as a trader, aside from the uh, from the time frames. You have to decide when you approach a chart or your preferred uh, pairs or your market. When you what you, when you see what you see, does it reflect your trading setup? What is your preferred trading setup? Do you like to trade reversals? Do you like to trade uh, 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 breakouts? Uh, are you, um, I don't know, what other tra trading setup is there, David? I mean, I think, you know, do you, do you like to use your moving averages, a moving average crossover? Well, un unless you know what the chart is telling you, you're not going to be able to say whether your trading setup is going to work or not. And, and what you also have to do as a trader, you don't know what is going to suit you from the beginning. You'll read lots of people saying, you know, there's lots of marketing material out there which say, you know, oh, you know, this is a guaranteed setup to work in all market conditions. Well, that is a load of hogwash because the C state of a market will dictate what will work and what will not work. So, for example, if if a uh, forex pair is in a trend with momentum and volatility, so it is going up, but it's going up in a in that. This is quite a very sort of smooth. This is actually quite a smooth movement here. It goes up, then it comes down, then it goes up, then it comes. That's that's not a. Uh, uh, that is not a trend with uh, uh, with volatility, and we'll see a trend with volatility um, later on and, and with momentum. What that tells you is, yes, it is going up, but it's, there's a lot of volatility, and what will happen is it will have a huge impact on your stock. You will. about that those of you who knows will know we've got a couple of dogs who um who just generally kick off whenever they hear anything right so I completely lost my flow sorry about that <laughs> do beg your pardon uh what was i saying trends yes so if you can't identify the c state um then you are going to be in uh then you're going to have difficulty but when you do identify the c state you then decide to uh, to take a trade all this what this all does it will help you to assess the risk that is on the trade that you want to take. There is nothing, there is, there is no such thing as a risk-free trade. There's nothing, that, that just doesn't exist in, the, in, in this business. Every trade will have an element of risk in terms of, you know, what is the price action likely to do? But if you can anticipate what the price action is likely to do, A, you can decide whether you're going to take the trade, but, sec uh, but secondly, much more important, it's also going to dictate where you are going to place your stop loss. And sometimes if you see, if you can see a move that you think is going to have, is going to have some momentum, but it's got volatility to it, and you think, yep, I'm really going to, I really like the look of that, I want to take that trade. The problem you may find is that when you look at your money management, the stop loss is going to have to be so wide that you think, you know, I can't actually take that trade because 
it's going to violate my money management rules. But the best way, as always, to see this is actually to look at it on the chart. And one of the uh, one of the best pairs to have a look at this uh, uh, this sort of thing is actually the pound yen, which is what I am looking at at the moment. So thank you for listening to me. For I've gone on a little bit longer than than usual. Um, I just wanted to get that in. Uh, if you're coming along next time, I'm not going to go over this in such great detail again because David is actually recording this. I'll just sort of skim over it for, for new people who come and suggest that uh, you know people go back and watch the um, uh, this first recording. Right, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pass back to David and I'm going to put some charts on which are far more interesting than the than what I've been saying. And here it is, and this is the pound yen, and we'll go and see um, how this actually reflects what I have been saying. But I'd just like to reiterate again, a lot of what we say here, the basics of it, you will find in the books. I know there are people uh, on this webinar who have the books already, so it's nice to come along and actually see uh, you know, what we say in the books in the live market. They then, you know, we carry it through in the webinars, but if you really, really want to get to the, you know, into a great in-depth um, understanding of what we say, then it is all covered in the programme. Thanks, Alan. I'm just going to switch screens for a moment onto uh, Ninja because I just want to highlight something on the, the with regard to the yen at the moment, and it's really just fundamental to um, the whole business of trading and picking up on the aspect of risk. It really is just about ascertaining the risk element. Just bear with us a moment. Just going to switch screens. I'm just going to switch off for a moment. You should be seeing my screen any minute now. There we go. I'm just looking across at Anna. Yeah, I can see it there. Um, basically, the reason I've pulled this up is because one of the most important aspects of, of trading is really understanding what it is that you're doing in your particular chosen pair. And the reason it's so important is to understand what is going on across the market. So, and this is just a classic example in real time. We've just gone through the London Open, and the market really oscillates around a very simple principle. The entire market, whether it's forex, whether it's indices, commodities, whatever it is, it is about risk. And you can think of risk in terms of a simple, a very, very simple seesaw. It's either risk on or it's risk off. And that is largely reflected through the Japanese yen. And what I've pulled up here is, is one of the indicators that we use a lot, which really describes this visually for it. And what you're looking at here in the top left, I've got a three minute, a five minute, a 10 minute, and a 15 minute. Just gonna switch off for a moment. Sorry, don't want... <clears throat> Sorry, you don't wanna hear me with a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> The, what the array does, it presents all the 28 pairs. You can see them visually ranked, ranked on the ladder here on the left-hand side. And what the indicator then displays visually for you is several things, but primarily it's showing you, first of all, the strength of the trend by the angle that is d described by each of the pairs. And what I've done here is I've isolated out on these toggle buttons here, I've isolated out the yen. So we are purely looking at the yen complex across these four time horizons. So you're looking at the isolation of the yen across the complex of the yen, and in addition, the strength of the trend, in other words, the strength of the buying or the strength of the selling for that particular currency across this time window. And what we're seeing here is the market is basically universally buying the yen. You might not be able to read this down here, but the, the, the strongest in terms of bearish sentiment, in other words, the strongest buying of the yen is on the Aussie yen here. We then go up to the New Zealand yen, 
the Swiss yen, the euro yen, pound yen, CAD yen, and finally at the top here, the dollar yen. Now the nice thing with the yen is because it's always the counter currency, this is very visual and it tells you instantly what is going on in terms of the yen. Is the yen being bought or is the yen being sold? And clearly across this time frame, in this particular session, the yen is being bought. It doesn't matter why it's being bought, it's just risk off right now. And what the currency array does for you, it tells you instantly that that is the case. And secondly, it tells you the strength. And in addition to that, it tells you where that is being uh, bought most strongly. And across this time window, the Aussie yen here is at the bottom on all four. And the reason that's important is very simply this. If you're going to be trading in a currency pair, you really want to understand and know what the sentiment is in the market for that particular currency and currency pair. You can think of it as a river. And if you're looking at the yen river right now, then the market in total is buying the yen. There are no exceptions. So if you're going to be trading a yen pair, that's very encouraging. That's basically the way you want to be trading because it's a lower risk proposition. And then it's a case of, of moving to the chart and deciding which of those particular pairs you want to be trading with. Now, rest assured, at some point in either this session or later in the session, the market will flip and it will go in the other direction. And that's obviously where you start to look at reversals. You're looking at volume price analysis. You're looking at buying coming into the market for those particular pairs rather than selling, et cetera, et cetera. But this is your overall view on the market. There's nothing wrong with trading against a, a major trend. So you will find on many occasions that on the currency array, for example, you'll find that the pair you are considering is not aligned with everything else. There's nothing wrong with that. But all it tells you is that it's a higher risk proposition from a trading perspective because you are counter trend trading against the sentiment which is broad in the market. So it's by definition a higher risk proposition. It has to be. If you're trading with the river, the flow of sentiment, it's a lower risk proposition. If you're paddling your canoe in isolation against a very strong flow, you may be fine. But first of all, be aware of it. And secondly, the chances are you're probably not going to be in it for that long. Now, the corollary to that is that at some point, this sentiment will shift. And what you would then see is you would then see all these currency pairs start to march north rather than marching south. Again, nothing wrong with that. Again, it's the application of volume price analysis because once that starts to happen, you will see the buying coming into the market for these pairs and they will start to, to move in this direction. And what you may also find is that one of them is leading the pack. Often the case that you might see a pound yen or a cad yen will start to march up here very strongly and the other, po uh, the other pairs on the complex tend to follow less slowly. So you in trading a, a buy opportunity on a yen pair right now may well be leading the pack. And, and the, uh, that, vis that vision on that decision will be very much driven by volume price analysis. And then you bring in the other indicators. Obviously, the currency strength indicator is key where you're looking for reversals in sentiment, where you're looking for that reversal in the currency from being strongly overbought to to uh, strongly oversold and reversals off those extremes. So I just wanted to highlight that. And just while I'm on here, I'll, I'll flip back to Anna in a moment. But let me just move over to the um, multiple, where are we, Spot Forex Master. There we go. Um, what I also wanted to highlight on this, this is multiple time frames are a facet, whether you're a time-based trader, whether you're a tick trader, whatever kind of trader you are. It is about multiple time frames because that is essential. What is happening here is you're seeing sentiment ripple through the time horizons and you get a completely different perspective in all dimensions from volume price analysis to what the indicators are telling you and everything else in between. But the reason I just wanted to highlight this was on the Aussie yen, and this is also true on, I'll just maximize that up so it's easier to see. The, the volatility indicator, this volatility indicator, which is a very simple indicator, and yet it's so powerful. We saw this yesterday. I think it was yesterday evening on or pretty much all the Aussie, the yen pairs. I think it was on euro yen as well, exactly the same sort of um, situation. When you get volatility in the market, 
what it's generally associated with is a dramatic increase in volume because the insiders and market makers are participating. Volatility is generally, not always, but generally associated with market maker uh, and insider participation. In other words, activity. It'll be around news. It'll be around Donald Trump's tweets, bless him. Uh, it'll be around any geopolitical event, uh, Brexit, you name it. There are opportunities. So when volatility appears in the market, it is an ideal opportunity for the inside of the market makers to actually trap traders into weak positions, which is why the volatility indicator is so powerful. And what it's telling you is that the price activity in that particular time horizon, we're on a 30 minute chart here. So within this 30 minute chart, this price action here has moved outside what we call the average true range. Average true range is really just a very simple mechanism for identifying when price action has moved outside the mean, the average, if you like, what the expected would be. So on a typical 30 minute Aussie yen chart, you know, if this is the sort of price action you expect to see, then we get this big volatility candle. We've moved way outside. This triggers in real time. So you don't have to wait for the candle to close. So if you're on a one minute time frame or a two minute, five minute, whatever it is, this will trigger automatically. And the reason it's so powerful is simply this, because as I said earlier, volatility and, and insider market maker activity go hand in hand. You'll see it reflected in volume. And the expectation when you see this, this indicator triggered is that the market is going to retrace. It's going to reverse. At the very least, it's going to congest. Why? Because that's what the insiders and market makers want to do. They want to create stress and pressure, the emotional pressure. You can imagine traders jumping into this position here, thinking the market is going to rocket some nice easy profit on the table let's jump in and then this happens now that is pressure that's an hour and a half's worth of pressure sitting there the market's not going anywhere the emotion you're driven by emotion because you're not sure you're uncertain you've maybe got a little bit of profit but it's being tagged about all over the place and you just don't know and then bang that happens you probably stopped out at that point anyway but even if you were still in and then it comes back again and you're hoping and praying this is going to carry on and it doesn't it carries on down that is the emotional pressure. That's why the indicator is so powerful, because when it's triggered, the expectation, the anticipation is that the market is either going to congest or it's going to retrace completely. Now, it doesn't always do that, but it's just a heads up. You've got two here, for example, more volatility. You had another one here. In this case, it did. It retraced completely, went totally in the other direction. So I just wanted to highlight it while I'm on this, while I'm on the Ninja Trader. Let me pass back to Anna at that point. Um, what I've done is uh, I've actually brought up, David was talking about the Aussie yen and I've, uh, I'll, I'll just explain what the, uh, how I have a very typical workspace on MT5 and the reason, one of the reasons I've, MT5 is so good is because it has the eight hour chart and what it then allows us to do is to break up the three main sessions because please don't be um, seduced by the idea that you can trade, you can, you know, um, all sessions are equal in the sense that um, it's the same number of participants. Those of you who know us will have, uh, you know, know that we talk about this a lot. And each session, you have to treat each session as a completely fresh market. You will know, you will know if you're at your screen all day, whatever happens overnight, may not necessarily happen when Europe opens and London opens. What happens when Europe opens sometimes is completely upended by London and by certainly when the US session opens. And this is something we're really going to talk about uh, in this afternoon. Uh, when we look at the American market, you will have a complete reversal of sentiment and risk. And this market is promoted to traders as any time, any place, anywhere. And you know, strictly speaking, that is correct because the market doesn't sleep. It just closes on Friday night and reopens on Sunday morning. But you cannot run away with the idea that each session is 
uh, the same as the previous or is likely going to be this, uh, the next one coming ahead. So as a day trader, if you are going to be here uh, at your desk all day, you have to be aware of it. And if you're not going to be there at your desk and perhaps you're going to be looking at uh, a, a, a limit order and just seeing things, you know, you want it broken down uh, into what has been happening in the individual sessions. Well, this is where the eight hour chart comes up, uh, will, will help you because First of all, you will uh, you will notice that the, uh, the the volume bars down here, the histogram of the volume bars in the Asian session, they are going to be much smaller. It's much more pronounced on the four hour chart, but the eight hour chart as well. And that is simply reflecting that there are fewer traders. The deepest liquidity for this market is New York, where you have three principal financial centers open. And you know, I know it may seem obvious, but it, it does really have to bear, uh, you know, uh, um, restating. And can I also say, if you're thinking of using an EA and you're thinking of perhaps automating a, one of your, uh, you know, your trading tactic, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, coming up with a, uh, with some kind of, um, you know, uh, decision making semi automated uh, system that you want to perhaps use you have to be aware that it's not going to work in all market conditions and in all the sessions because a the market conditions change all the time and secondly uh, the sessions are not equal now the reason I pulled up this chart this eight hour chart because it actually reflects David do you, you know we're talking about the price cycle and we were talking about uh, a trend and uh, a trend with uh, momentum a trend with volatility and then we have a, uh, a consolidation period and if I go back and just show you the little thing what we have we have a really nice real life uh, uh, expression of what we saw here we have the primary trend the pullbacks of what we call the secondary trends then we have the distribution and the selling climax and now we are in uh, uh, you know, what sort of C state are we seeing? Where are we in the price cycle? And I actually think, I don't know whether you would agree, David, that this chart, the eight hour chart of the Aussie yen really does express that perfectly. Would you agree? Is there anything you want to say about that before I go back? Yeah, and then I'll go back to the faster time frames. Is that okay, lovey? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I'll turn myself Sorry, no problem. Um, and really, just to um, reinforce what Anna is saying there, and this this might um, this might make you you chuckle, but when we first started this 20 odd years ago, and we were learning about volume price analysis, and we were learning about um, cycles of that particular price action from uh, the various phases through distribution, accumulation, through the cycle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, the time frame we were looking at, I think, was something like a 10 year, and some of the people, um, and I have to say we were included in this group, we were kind of sitting there thinking, well, does that mean we have to wait 10 years in, before we actually take a trade? And it was merely just a demonstration of that particular time frame. That particular cycle um, that repeats and repeats and repeats endlessly will occur on every time frame from a one minute through to a one month. It's just that obviously on the slower time frames, it takes a lot longer and it lasts a lot longer. On a one minute time frame, it'll happen a lot faster. It may encompass only, I don't know, 90 minutes of time maybe in total, maybe two hours. If you move to a five minute or 15 minute time frame, then that whole cycle may last several hours. If you move to a four hour or eight hour chart, that cycle may last days, weeks, etc., etc. So the principle is identical. And what it describes is really the whole business of price action which is all self-similar. It is, as Anna said, it's, it's the Russian doll. It's wheels within wheels, from the smallest to the largest. And that is all you are ever looking at. You're looking at the, a complex mechanism of cogs within cogs, all of which are repeating. And it's the issue we all have to deal with, where in a fast time frame, the pair may be bullish, whereas in a slower time frame, it may be very bearish. So what you're looking at in a faster time frame is merely a minor pullback or reversal against what is actually the trend in a slower time frame. But that's just a fact of life. And what it also focuses the mind on is that when you're trading, you do have to have a very tight 
definition of what it is you're trying to do. In other words, you have to limit your vision. And the only analogy that I can think of and that I've come up with in the past is we love horse racing, we love flat racing, is, is where a horse is blinkered because that horse, for whatever reason, gets distracted by other horses around it. So they put blinkers on and the blinkers then focus the horse and all the horse does is then look at the finishing line or what it's doing right then. It's not distracted by other animals around it. And it's the same as the true here. You have to think of it in terms of blinkering yourself and trying to focus on your chosen time horizon. What am I doing? Am I, am I scalping this market? Am I, am I looking for a longer term breakout? What am I doing? What are my tactics? And what is my chosen time horizon? So you really do have to highlight, uh, highlight that and focus on it because what will happen ultimately, and let's face it, we all do it, um, you, you go in with one expectation on a faster time frame. It doesn't quite work out. So you, you slide away and you start to look at the slower time horizons. And you think, oh, well, actually, I think over here, I'm, I might be OK if, if I now flip this to a longer term position. We've all done it. We all do it. It's very easily done. And it's hard to focus on, on what you're trying to do. But we do have to do that. I'm going to pass back to Anna. We do that because we don't want to admit that we're wrong. That's all it comes down to. We take a trade. It doesn't go in our way. It doesn't go in our direction. So we go and hunt around in another time frame to validate our original decision. And we say, oh, well, you know, in that time frame, it'll probably come, come right. And that's what it really comes down to. It's the fact that we cannot face being wrong or face a loss. And if you can't do that and you can't get to grips with it or you can't find some uh, strategies to help you deal with that, then you are really, really going to struggle. But what I was going to say here is these, look at these three candles at the end of this chart. We've looked at the overall structure. We, we, we know that we had, uh, uh, you know, we've had this period of, uh, of distribution. We've had this period of, uh, of, of, consoli of, of consolidation. We've had this really strong move down. We've had this, uh, we've had this pullback but this is the eight hour chart so each one of these candles represents a session if you like now this candle here with the big uh, wick to the uh, the bottom is the um really reflects what's happened last night when uh, trump and Juncker over in in the state saying that basically the tariff uh, the war the the tariff war has kind of been postponed. The market went absolutely nuts. You know, oh great, you know, the sun, sun's out, risk off. So there was heavy, heavy selling of the yen. As we said, if there's the one thing you have to learn in this, there's two things. There's one thing you have, uh, two things you have to learn in this market. First of all, uh, always know what the yen is doing because that is going to impact uh, sentiment in the market and obviously clearly know what the US dollar is doing. But this is what this was, uh, this happened. So, you know, you think, oh, great, the sun's out again, you know, and away we go. What happened in Asia? The complete opposite. Now, there may be all sorts of reasons for that. Now, I know it's unlikely that traders will be trading the US session and then flip over into the Asia session, but it's just a perfect example of what we mean by the change in sentiment. Now, what it also tells you is within this big candle here from yesterday, there would have been what is called pretty good two-way action on the faster time frame. Because as a faster time frame uh, a trader, and I mean going on the 5, the 10s, the 15s, even the Renko charts, the non-time-based charts, you don't really care in the sense, you don't not care about sentiment. You need to know what, what sentiment is doing because it's going to impact um, you know, the trade that you're going to take and you want to be on the right side of the market. But if you've got a nice big widespread candle in a complete session, this is a widespread candle. That's a widespread candle. I mean, look at that candle and look at that candle. There we are where uh, sentiments are really sort of changed and it really broke away from the beginning of the breakdown uh, from uh, the, uh, uh, the distribution of the phase and, and coming away. There would have been plenty of opportunity to take trades because what you want as a as as a, uh, as a day trader or as a trader that you know you're not going to be in the in in very long is you want you know um, a pair that there's going to it's going to move a bit. I mean, if for for traders who trade the indices 
if you uh, were going to look at it at the YM, which is the futures contract for the Dow, it's been absolutely horrible. It's been in a very tight range. When things are in a tight range, uh, we get bored. Uh, we, we start doing silly things because we are bored. Does it mean we can't take trades? No, we can't, but it goes back to risk. It's the assessment of risk. If, the, um, you know, if we're in a consolidation phase uh, and there's not a lot of, uh, of volatility, but a tight range as well, yes, you may be going to be able to take a trade, but you're not going to be in it very long because you're probably going to have a, a, a reversal fairly, fairly quickly. And this is where we look at if you like, the non-time-based chart. So what we can see, just go back to this eight-hour eight chart, what we've seen here, we did have a continuation of sentiment into the European and London session. It still like it still looks as though it's, it, it's, it's going lower. And this is where your support and resistance comes in. This is where the, 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 uh, the bit of VPA, which includes support and resistance, you can measure support and resistance however you like. You can do it manually, you can do it vertically, you can do it horizontally. I don't use trend lines. I haven't even got any moving averages on this particular chart. I may put some on later. What we used with our, uh, to help us define the support and resistance areas, those areas on the chart where the price is, like, is likely to pause, where it is aiming for, we have our own proprietary uh, uh, SNR indicator. These are the, uh, the gold lines here and, and the hash lines here, here. We also have the volume point of control which is volume, price and time. And we can see the volume point of control for this particular pair is way down here at 81.25. And what the VPOC is, is it's basically the, it, it picks up the, uh, uh, the, it's transacted volume. It's the amount of time that uh, a pair um, has stayed at this particular price level or market, because what happens is it's always in a, usually it, it will be in a congestion phase, and the longer it stays a, oscillating around uh, the VPOC, the volume point of control, it's actually an expression of Wyckoff's second law of cause and effect, where basically the longer uh, uh, the, the cause, in other words, the longer the time. Uh, a market stays in a consolidation, the greater the effect. And what will, what, how we know that is basically at some point back here, when this pair was in a, a, a consolidation, the breakaway is going to be that much stronger. It's like a coiled spring. Anyway, it's all, as I said, it is explained in the books in, in more detail, but it is Wyckoff's second law of course and in fact something that um, a lot of traders find difficult to understand but it's really uh, it brings the idea of volatility and momentum in it now the price at the moment is some way away from the volume point of control at the moment it seems to be around here where we are the what we call the s3 now these numbers here r3 r2 R, this is what um, our camarilla level uh, is it's another way of defining support and resistance. You can use Fibonacci. That's why a lot of uh, traders use Fibonacci. Um, on one, in one of the future sessions, I'll actually show how you can use Fibonacci with uh, VPA and what it actually does. The Fibonacci it actually makes our indicators look pretty good, which I'm really proud about. But what these levels I think Anna's just dropped out of audio.
can't you. you can't hear me, no? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. I'm back. Can you, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can. Sorry, we... Um, just the connection dropped out. Sorry, the connection dropped out for a moment. We're back. I'm just going to switch myself off. Hi. Right. You can hear me now, love you. Okay. I can't remember what I'm saying. Right. The Camarilla levels. Yes, this is just another way. It's another indicator we've developed to basically give some structure to the chart to help with price objective, to help with stop placement as well. And um, what it also does, it helps us um, define those areas on the chart, as I said, that are going to be significant. Either they're significant at the moment or they're going to be significant in the future. And when it approaches the S3, now it will pause, it will possibly bounce off the S3, but if it goes through the S4, where is it going to head for? Well, the next one is our S. Uh, is S3 is our S4. The S4 is a uh, critical line for a critical level in the Camarilla because a clean breakthrough and, uh, and a pull away from the S4 is often under the Camarilla protocol perceived as a uh, valid breakaway and a breakdown, if you like, of the price action. And we actually see it here up here. When we looked at this um, uh, distribution phase here, we had the S4 up here. Where you can see the price came up to it, tested it. It actually went through, but then pulled back on it. Then this big candle, but it's the failure to break and hold. This is a key level, an, S, an S4 or an R4 level under the uh, Camarilla protocol is a hugely significant level. Now, sometimes it will break away, but it won't necessarily go very far. And certainly here on this chart, if you look at this uh, uh, background onto this chart, you can see this This is around the VPOC. What that also tells you is this is going to struggle. This has got a dense area of uh, of, of transacted volume. So price is going to, you know, it's not going to slice through that fairly, fairly quickly. So if you're going to take a trade on the faster time frames, you have to expect that you're possibly, you know, it's going to struggle a bit at that point. Now, what's happened here with the Renko, and we're going to move right away from the uh, from the eight hour chart and we're going to see, right, but we've done the analysis on this on the on this uh, uh, chart at the at the slower level. Well, how does that actually going to impact on? You know, I'm only going to trade the three minute chart, the four minute chart um, with a Renko. Well, the first thing it tells us is levels at a slower time frame are hugely significant. You have to know what these levels are on these slower time frames because they're going to be stronger. They're going to be much more. Uh, uh, they're going to have much more impact, and that impact is going to be felt on the faster time frames and what we see here is on the Renko and I've actually set this Renko which is a non-time based chart on two pips so each uh, each brick is only painted after two pips have gone through the market now what this happens what a Renko does it strips away the noise that you get with with candles and it's a beautiful chart and it actually also helps to describe the price cycle very, very simply. It's a much cleaner chart. You've got, I've actually uh, set it up with the support and resistance. Our Renko for um, MT5 is unique. I think we're the only company that actually has managed to produce a Renko for MT5. Is that, all, is that right, David? And well, not only that, but it also allows you to put proprietary and um, 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 uh, standard indicators. If I wanted to put a, a moving average on here, I can here. I, most, I know all other software companies haven't done it. We're the only one who has. And what I've put on here is I've put the, our little trend dots, I've put our pivots, I've got fractals. It's pretty much a very uh, clear chart. And here, this is what I mean. We've got a, a beautiful, this was the trend higher. You would call that a trend with momentum. The only volatility was this little pullback here. Then we had a little bit of, uh, then we had a pullback. Then, as I said, and if you expanded that, you would say that was a, a sort of a turning point, if you like, which would have been picked up on the CSI as well. Now, this is the, now that's awfully interesting. We know where we've been, but we want to know where we're going now. And the the clue now is, is, is this, the question now is, is this going to be going to go higher? Or is it going to consolidate around this level, possibly giving us an opportunity? Are we going to take a little, is there going to be a change of sentiment? Who knows? 
it will be interesting to revisit this chart later on this afternoon because the Aussie yen as a pair is also a proxy for risk and sentiment. So, and here we're going to have to be patient or actually, are we going to take a continuation? Uh, we're going to trade, uh, we're going to take a continuation trade and it's not chasing price. It is a continuation trade based on some very clear analytical decisions and the analytical decisions are pretty much going to be if you like determined by what is happening in the session there's going to be a change over in the session uh, I think this goes off to is it two o'clock the eight hour chart I think it uh, I think it flicks over at something about the American the US session the s3 is a this is a pretty strong level and it's trying to bounce off here so at the moment we simply have to be patient and of course we've got the CSI what is the CSI telling us well you know this is a three minute chart you've got there is buying of the uh, of, of the Aussie here but the yen is still rising so they're still buying of the yen so if I were if this were one of my pairs and I'd missed all these moves now what is my uh, you know what do I have to do well I really do have to be patient and also on the M3 what's interesting now, with our Camarilla levels, if I can just explain, okay, um, the levels that you get on the faster time frames are not the same as the levels you get on the slower time frame. So, on the eight-hour chart and the daily chart, they will stay on that chart for the whole month. Um, it's how we've uh, uh, con constructed the indicator on the faster time frames. How down here at uh, up to the hour, these update every day so you look at your levels now at the moment as you can see here it's as i said about the s4 it actually is broken through it's tried to pull away and what happens when price when it breaks a level it always tries to retest it and come back so you know sometimes taking your trade on the on the first break you you may find that the price will come back and retest it. So you have to look at uh, more than one time frame to see, yeah, is that going to, which is, uh, is that going to carry through? Which is why a lot of traders don't like trading breakaways because they say it's a fake out, it's a fake out. But what the S4 also tells you, and you've got the VPOC here above it, is that you do have a lot of resistance up there. So even if it's going to retest it, possibly it is going to cap it and you know give you some comfort. Where would you put your stop? Well. Your levels, you've got the VPOC level at 82.25. If you want to, uh, you know, it's going to be a fairly tight stop because you've, uh, you're on a faster time frame. You've got all this resistance uh, up there. And if you're going to take a reversal and you think, no, I'm going to try and sneak a few pips going the other way, what is your price objective? Well, you know, the levels tell you they're there. The resistance is there. If it gets there and it's going to push through, it's going to find it pretty tough going. And for actual entries and, ent and exits, this is where your Renko comes in because, as I said, it's very clean. It's It'll help you make good decisions and what we call smarter entries. Sorry, David, I've gone on too much. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, do you want to move over to you or is that it? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, before, want... sorry, you off. Yeah, sorry, just before I forget, um, I know we've got uh, quite a few Ninja Trader customers in the room and y you must be thinking, when is when is it going to be available, Camarilla and, and the Renko? Rest assured, um, if you're subscribed to the Quantum YouTube channel, you will have seen the videos going up. We're literally just tidying up some of the support pages and one or two bits and pieces. So the Camarilla will be available for Ninja Trader 7 and 8 and we've also developed a what we call the Renko Optimizer for Ninja Trader 7 and 8. As I'm sure you're familiar on Ninja Trader, Renko is a standard um, charting facility. It's not on MT45, but it is on Ninja Trader. And what we've developed in terms of the Ninja Trader uh, Renko version is one that is optimized automatically for any particular time frame, and it does it all. It basically, you select, I'll, I'll show it this afternoon on Ninja, I won't do it now, but I'll do it on Ninja this afternoon. You'll see how, how, how simple and intuitive it is, fantastic indicator, and automatically optimizes the Renko chart for that particular instrument in that particular time frame um, and delivers what is the optimal setting for the chart at that particular time. Um, do you want to switch over to Ninja for a minute? Just check up on the array or? Okay, fine. All righty. 
Just to, I won't switch over onto Ninja or stay with MT4, but just to, uh, MT5 rather, beg your pardon, but just to give you a heads up to the array, we won't change over, but I'll just flick over it onto my screen. Um, let's just have a look, see where we are, just move that out of the way, there and there, okay. Um, whilst the, the yen buying is still very strong, certainly for the Aussie and for one or two of the other pairs. What we're starting to see now on the array, as I say, won't flick over, but we're just starting to see the potential for a transition because we're starting to see the CAD yen, for example, on the slower time frame starting to move up a little bit. And that change in sentiment is now starting to be reflected on the array. And it's just such a powerful indicator in doing that and helping you make that decision. Just passing back to Anna. I've just moved over to the uh, pound, uh, the pound yen, which is obviously you know, a much more, uh, uh, it's a much more volatile pair than than the uh, Aussie yen. And again, on the uh, eight-hour chart, we can see here. If you go look back here, we have a nice uh, two-bar reversal here. Then we start with the beginning of this trend, but. It is a trend and it has a it has momentum, but it also has volatility. How do we know it has volatility? Look at the wicks to the tops of these candles up there, uh, to the top there. Look at that candle there. It's still going up, but that is what we mean by a trend with both momentum and volatility. It is it is a fact. It is a feature of the pound yen. It doesn't stay in uh, you know the distribution phase that long. Uh, and then it, when it moves, it moves quickly. You can see here again, you we're in a downtrend, but again, a lot of volatility. Why? Because we have all these wicks. Now, each one of these candles, as I said, represents a session. Uh, I don't know which one uh, this is. It might have been in uh, the New York, and that may be Asia. I'd have to go in and, and check. But you can see the difference in range. It is a downtrend. But as I said, a lot of volatility. It's what you get with pound yen. It'll reward you, but boy, it can it can punish you as well, which is why it's good to have it on Arenko. And Arenko really picks up this, uh, 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 just how volatile this pair can be, unlike something like a, a New Zealand yen and a um, or an Aussie yen. You can uh, make money fast, but you can lose money fast. And I've also done the same with a Euro yen. That's my euro yen. Do, 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 do. No, euro. No, I haven't done a euro yen. I do both. I'll have it ready for next time. So we'll be back later. I'm just going to pass over to David, and he'll just just talk you through the last bits and pieces. Thanks, darling. Just to wrap up um, and to point you in various directions. I know some of you already have some of the indicators, but if you are new to us, you'll find all the indicators over at www.quantumtrading.com. You're more than welcome to buy one or several on the site there. You'll find we've got uh, discounts for bundles of indicators. One of the most popular indicators is the currency dashboard for Forex traders because there we've um, bundled together the currency strength indicator, the currency array, the currency matrix and the currency heat map. They're four very powerful indicators, but they're in one package and you can buy them outright. Um, the, the outright price is $497 and you can also buy on the uh, three monthly plan, which is $166 a month. Alternatively, uh, you can also buy, of course, the full package and the full package for MT45 is, is just 894 and it's heavily discounted from the total, I think it runs at something over $2,000 now. And one of the uniques as a company, what we do, I know some of you are familiar with this already and some of you have been with us for many years. That is the price of the full package in terms of MT4, is 894. It never changes, it's never changed since day one. What does change is we add all new indicators free. So if you, if you subscribe to the full package, you will get all future indicators we develop free of charge. For those of you who've had the free pack, who've had the full, been on the full package for a while, you know, the last two we added, we added the Renko and uh, the camera le levels indicator. They just get added to your quantum dashboard and you have them to use. They are free. No other company on the planet does this. That's what we do. It's just a way of saying thank you to you. 
And of course, every indicator you buy, whether you buy one or you buy the full package, doesn't matter. You get 24-7 support. It's 365 days of the year. You will get answers at the weekend. That's just the way we work. We've always founded the company on the premise that support is absolutely key. We have traders all around the world, all different time zones. So that is another key facet of um, of the uh, the package. And of course, exactly the same package applies to Ninja Trader as well. It's a little bit more expensive than Ninja Trader. The only reason for that is that because within Ninja Trader we have the tick speedometer indicator, and that's basically the difference between the two packages. And you also have the option, a lot of our customers, what they find is they maybe start with MT45 and then they want to migrate up to the Ninja Trader platform. And we make that very straightforward, very seamless. There's no cost involved. We just uh, relicense. It's something, again, that we, we offer every single customer. And you can also do that with individual indicators. If you have one indicator and you decide you want to migrate to another platform, because your requirements as a trader change, we are developing other platforms in the future. I think the next one we're going to look at is uh, probably TradeStation. We're also possibly going to have a look at TradingView. Um, so those are two platforms we are going to consider. And exactly the same principles apply. If you've bought the CSI, for example, and you're on MT4, you can change that yourself because you can do that through the user dashboard. It's very, very simple. We give you full control over your indicators on the MT4, MT5 platform. But if in the future you decided you wanted to go to NinjaTrader, for example, we just make that seamless. We just issue a new license for you, transfer you over. And all you'll need to do is obviously pay for a feed. The kinetic feed is one we recommend for Ninja Trader. And off you go. You'll have the indicator over there. That's it. You never pay us another penny, another cent, whatever. You get full support. All the upgrades, everything's included. You never pay us any more for anything. If you're interested in the complete program, you'll find that at quantumtradingeducation.com. We believe it's the most comprehensive education program anywhere for Forex traders. We cover everything from the relational to the fundamental to the technical. VPA is a big part of that. Uh, there's all the mechanics of trading. We've got putting it together videos. We talk about the indicators in more detail in video format. It's all there. The program is available. It includes the full suite of quantum indicators. So. If you look at the difference, for example, in terms of 894 for the MT45 package of indicators, for an additional $497, you get the full program. That's it. There's a huge array of videos. There's 13 PDF downloads. There's hundreds of examples, and it really is a comprehensive package, and you'll find it all at quantumtradingeducation.com. If you have any questions, um, more than happy to answer them. Um, Anna at AnnaCooling.com. Anna will answer those there. And um, we thank you for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And you're more than welcome to join us for the US session where it'll be much more stock index and commodity focused. But we will have some, obviously, some Forex there as well. We'll take a quick look at what's gone on this morning and we will see you there. So it's bye for now from us. We're going to take the dogs for a walk and we will see you later. <laughs>